Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a delicious, juicy, tender, and flavorful, 100% grass-fed ribeye steak. This thing is easy to make, anybody can do this, and you will just look like the master chef. I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right after my chef joke. Okay, here's chef joke number one. Why are steaks so happy at barbecues? Because they get to meet their old flames. I picked up a 100% grass-fed ribeye steak here, and it looks to be about, on average, an, an inch and a half thick. This is obviously going to affect cooking time, meaning the thicker it is, the longer it'll take. And you wanna let this steak sit out for a good 45 minutes before you try and cook it. When you're ready to cook your steak, go ahead and season it up generously with some sea salt and some pepper, and that's really all you need. Then we'll flip the steak over and season the other side. Let's head on over and start cooking. I've been preheating a cast iron pan over medium high heat because we want to start this nice and hot. In fact, once you see the pan starting to smoke, then you know it's ready. While the pan is getting hot, let me show you what else we're going to need. That would be fresh rosemary right out of my garden, and I'm going to cut that into just smaller pieces. We'll also need some Kerrygold butter that's grass-fed to go along with our grass-fed beef. I'm gonna cut this up into smaller pieces, that way it will just melt quicker in the pan. Lastly, we're gonna wanna prep up some fresh garlic. So go ahead and cut off the ends and peel the garlic, and we're gonna add this to the pan. If you smash your garlic like this, like you might do the like button if you're enjoying the video, it helps to remove the paper on the garlic, but you want to leave it on to protect it from burning when it's cooking. So I'm leaving the paper loosely attached. See that smoking hot pan there? Well, that means it's time to start cooking that steak. Drizzle just a little bit of olive oil into the pan and swirl it around. Notice how the oil has changed here. It sort of has these lines going through it. That's how you know it's hot. When you go to lay your steak into the pan, you want to start at the end closest to you and lay it out away from you. That way you won't get burned by if there's any liquid in the pan that's going to spill out and, and move towards you. And once you lay that steak down, don't touch it. Don't move it. Just let it sear. After two to three minutes, we're going to turn this over. Now here's what the sear looks like. And we're going to cook the second side another two minutes. Because the steak is about an inch and a half thick, I'm going to do the sides as well. So I'm going to use my tongs to hold it up on edge and just let it sear for maybe 20-30 seconds on each side. Now we're going to lay the steak back down and turn the temperature to low. I'll toss in the butter, place the garlic on top, and I even like to rub it in a little bit so the flavor gets on it. And then we'll add, I'll throw it in on the side, and then I'll add the rosemary. I'll spoon some of that butter sauce over the top of the steak for some extra flavor, and then I'm gonna place this into a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 10 minutes. Now your best trend for cooking a steak is an instant read thermometer like I have here. This is gonna help you be accurate in your cooking, so make sure you have one of these or go ahead and get one. After 10 minutes of cooking, I checked the temperature, and I wanted it to be like 130, but it was a little over, so I took it out. Now I took the steak out of the pan because if I left it in there, it's going to continue to really cook because that pan stays so hot. So take it out, put it on something, another plate or a cutting board, whatever you have, and let it rest. You should let it rest for a good 10 minutes before you slice it. That way, all the juices have a chance to redistribute back into the meat. Now, I only let this rest about probably five to six minutes, and it wasn't enough, so make sure you go a good 10. This steak was tender, juicy, and delicious. Now the perfect side dish to go with your steak is my smashed potato recipe. It is delicious and crunchy and cheesy and oh my goodness, goes perfect with a steak. Click the link on the screen and it'll take you right to the video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, let me know by smashing the old like button and share this video with someone who you think might enjoy making a delicious ribeye steak. All right, we'll see you back here next week for another rockin' recipe.